that became a subject of debate for a long time. It brought trouble between Paul and Peter. Peter said, no, listen, this gospel, the Gentiles are uncircumcised people. They are not supposed to be part of this covenant. And now Paul is saying, no, I've encountered Jesus and I've read from prophecy that the same Lord is rich unto all, that salvation is first of the Jews. Now what Peter was saying was that the Gentiles have to become Jews by circumcision. Then when they are now circumcised, they can now receive the experience. And Paul is saying, no, this is a new order. They do not need physical circumcision again. That they are spiritual Jews because they have believed in Christ who was rooted in Abraham. And Peter said, no, I don't agree with this. Pioneering is very hard because for many years you will walk alone. There are people who introduce certain products from an economic standpoint in Nigeria and for many years they walked alone. There are many people who introduce certain things by the spirit. Are we together now? All through church history. Anywhere you see a pioneer of a ministry, a pioneer of a business, a pioneer of a, a dimension in the spirit, they are deserving of your honor forever. In Nigeria here, for instance, we never knew and we never believed that God could raise men to build cities, men to become like cities. But once upon a time, many years ago, those we call fathers today as young men, they went largely to places like Tulsa, Oklahoma, and they saw what God was doing through men like Kenneth E. Hagin and all those who had gone before him. They returned back with an anointing and an inspiration and one by one, you would hear that they went to bushes and began to buy kilometers like madmen with no guarantee. And they turned those bushes, like I said last week, to cities. It was a pioneering grace. How about those who started 24-hour prayers? There was no guarantee that that would happen. And there are campgrounds today where people literally pray 24 hours. There are many things that we never knew that the church and believers could come into. And then God sampled a few people. Now, the law is found in Isaiah 9 and verse 8. Give it to us, please. Isaiah 9 and verse 8. The Lord sent a word into, not to Jacob, into Jacob. He sent a word, a dimension into Jacob, and it lighted upon Israel. Every time God wants to introduce a new dimension to men, he will find a man. Say a man. And he will place an unction upon that man and enter a covenant with that man. That man will now model that possibility to the body of Christ. When he models that possibility, then as many who believe that this is a reality, now begin to come into those experiences. Hallelujah. We never knew that there was a creative dimension, for instance, to the prophetic. Most people's idea about the prophetic is prophesying by revealing information. But many of our fathers came and they brought a dimension, a creative dimension. They may not tell you your name and tell you all of that, but men like Baba Debe will say, there's someone here in the name of Jesus. By tomorrow, this will happen. And you hear people shouting amen like madmen. And sometimes they live from that church service into their testimonies. That was where we learned that the creative power, the prophetic word is not only revelatory in nature, it is also creative. Today, we have stood upon those models and it has helped us to do ministry effectively. Are we together? That beyond revealing details, which is profitable of course, we can speak over people that in the name of Jesus, may God open a door and our faith is anchored on Jesus, but anchored on the possibility that has been modeled to us by those who have gone ahead of us. If you understand me, shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Or a Robert in modern history, I believe is one of the persons who showed the dignity of kingdom wealth and prosperity 
that it can happen to a man who was called by God. Until then, people never believed that if you answer the call, you can live a life of dignity. Are we together? Now, there are exaggerated dimensions to prosperity I will always observe. But I'm talking about prosperity with a purpose from a kingdom standpoint. It was Ora Robert who believed God and brought, I think, the generation of the last, say, 60, 70 years into the consciousness that God can bless men void of manipulation. God can bless men regardless whatever it is they are doing. And he built today the Ora Roberts University. When you get to that campus, you will see a praying hand as a symbol that God answers prayer, as a testament of faith. When he set that model, many people began to believe God. And you see, the replication became faster. Today, by the grace of God, down through history, among the many things we have received, when we are believing God for things, we also believe him for the blessing. You're sitting here today, your comfort while you are listening, void of pressure and void of manipulation is because of someone's sacrifice. They showed us what God could do and we released our faith towards that direction. Hallelujah. Billy Graham, among many, he was one man who showed us that on account of the gospel, you can fill a stadium. You can gather a crowd of people, not just for self-marketing, but that there is an unction that can come upon a man that even with the simplicity of your speech, you can gather a whole nation. Billy Graham preached in North Korea. Can you imagine? Every president, he rose to a point of influence. And there are great men. And you know that includes even fathers in our nation who saw that as a possibility. It was David Yongichu of blessed memory who surprised the whole world in modern history. He developed a model with God and encountered an anointing that granted him grace to build an auditorium where people would come all around to worship. 750,000 people per week. Are we together? Young Gichu of blessed memory. When he did that, our father in the Lord, Baba Deboe, went and met him. Watch this. They went there to see it. I'm saying this because he said it by himself. That when he went and stood there, that was the first time he had a man of God begging members not to come to the next Sunday so that others will have space. Have you ever seen that happen? That you beg and say, please help those who have not come. Let them also enjoy the presence of God. So if you come this week now till miracle service, don't come again. <laughs> and our father in the Lord said, he saw this and he said, my God, so God can move like this in a man. He returned back and today the RCCG is a global testimony of what God can do. I've been there many times. I've had the honor and the privilege of preaching alongside our father in the Lord. And I have seen this with shock and wonder. When they are buying lands, they don't measure like the way you measure in a tape. You just keep moving wherever it stops. Today we can believe God for great things. Like we say in Nigeria, who dash monkey banana for some of us to be trusting God for big visions and big dreams for the kingdom. We saw others who went ahead of us that God could honor a man beyond your local place where you are domiciled at. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus Christ. In this season, everything you have seen God do through men that is needed for your destiny, may you come into that experience. Amen. Hallelujah. Young Cho has gone to be with the Lord today. For those who never had the privilege to see him, a father in the Lord that the Jew is still alive and strong. And today he has become a model. Every time I have the honor of going to the campground, I just look at that place and I'm like, my God, what did you tell this man? Three kilometer by three kilometer. That is one auditorium. That is one space. That's not the only space. Three kilometer by three kilometer. Hallelujah. I've been to the redeemed campground in Dallas. Amazing. 
massive estate as if it's not America this is God for you can I tell you by this revelation tonight may your faith be enlarged yes. shout a loud amen may your faith be enlarged yes. God's servant Bishop Oyedeko started right from Kaduna right from that lowly there are people today who are in ministry who were there when he was starting and today God has lifted him and given the ministry a spread across the globe there is nothing you cannot do there's no mountain you cannot move if you have said it then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word. You're not about. <laughs> I remember in our small way when we started our little crusade, our whole ushers, you would divide our ushering team by three or four. That was the number of those who came for the crusade today. And we fasted, we prayed, we trained ourselves. But we were not discouraged, you know why? Because there were models before us. So it gave us hope that even though we we're just starting, that even though our beginning were small, that our latter end will increase. Hallelujah. Many of us would have been discouraged in the journey until we had the testimony of models and they told us they went through worse conditions in ministry and it planted hope you know why sometimes people tell their stories not just to brag they tell their stories sometimes to motivate someone to let you know that if God did it yesterday he would do it today you're not the first person to beg for food as a man of God you're not the first person to go to bed hungry there are men who were in that lowly estate and yet the God of heaven exalted them hallelujah so I was generally saying to pioneer any move is very difficult now I must tell you this there are two limitations that if you are a pioneer of anything you have to be aware of if you are not careful you will fall prey to these two limitations number one pioneering requires humility to keep growing and not to fight improvements when you see it the danger of pioneering is that because most pioneers are emotionally connected to their pain. They are emotionally connected to the lonely nights, the sacrifices that have gone into doing what they are doing. Anytime they see an improvement on what they have done, they will most likely frown at it. It is the weakness that comes with pioneering. Hallelujah. This is true. If you have ever pioneered anything in any degree in your life, you will know the bias. How many of you have seen parents buy their first car? Remember, the first car that they will never sell. Your dad is a billionaire, and yet that first car is somewhere in the garage. Sir, why won't you sell this car? And he will tell you, you let me, this car reminds me that God is faithful. And when the car is scattered and gone, he will keep one tire, he will keep one gearbox, and you, are you worshiping it? And he says, you will not understand. I used to wonder many years ago why a lot of elderly people seem to be emotionally connected to things that didn't make sense to young people. They will keep certain monuments. They will keep certain gifts. You will see a man holding a very squeezed book, holding one squeezed letter, and he will not let it go. And you say, this letter, I got this letter in 1941. This was the first award I received. And the person he's talking to is sleeping. Because it makes no sense to you. So it is not unusual that when you pioneer things and they work at any level, you become emotionally connected to your results such that it becomes difficult to embrace improvement. Imagine that the Wright brothers came back to life 
and they saw what looked like the initial stages of their invention, they would run away from their own invention. Today we have supersonic aircraft. I mean that can move kilometers within minutes. I'm not sure they saw that far when they started. How about those who started vehicles? You see, let me tell you this. Models must be secured enough to allow improvement without feeling like failures. It is one thing models need to understand. One of the reasons I tell you with all due respect why the body of Christ has not evolved is because the emotional connect of models to the dealings that they had with God may not easily allow them to embrace other dimensions of God because they are emotionally connected to the things that have produced their result today. But God is always in motion. Did you hear what I said? Technology is a lesson to us that any model that you see is not yet the best of its version. Phones, cars, every year there is improvement on the models. It is because of the flexibility of science to allow creativity find its cause that today we have all kinds of things. If those who initially brought for us technology, if they sat on what they did and said there cannot be improvement. Listen, the model of healing that we know is the one we saw from scripture and the one that has been demonstrated to us. But I, I tell you before Christ returns, you will see other models of healing where people will stand from one position and literally speak to nations. Who would have known that the sun can stand still over a territory? But one person did it. And just because it's not been done again does not mean it will not be done. If the need arises, the same God can make it happen. If making the sun stand still is a strategy for massive salvation, you can trust that the Lord of the harvest will place grace on someone. But the question is when it happens, will you have the heart to believe? See, the current move of God always, almost always fights the next move of God. It is a limitation, the second limitation with models. The current move of God always, almost always seems to fight the next move of God. If I have seen God move this way, if I have seen God lift men this way, if I have seen God prosper men this way, chances are excellent that when I see God move again in a way that is foreign to my experience, immediately I flag it off and I say, no, God cannot prosper this way. Now look up, let me give you an example. I will never advocate carelessness, laziness, get rich quick, and so on and so forth. The model for wealth as we know in our world is diligence, the Lord blessing the works of your hands, and you grow gradually. If you build a house after 20 years, 30 years, men will clap for you and say, that's right, that's how life works. But in the economy of God, there are other possibilities that only few people have revealed. For instance, by this time tomorrow. Now, what if that happens to someone? You have defied all the economic laws you know. That is not throwing away the laws. It is building on that foundation that God can also go this far. How about a fish producing coin? How about manna falling from heaven? What other dimension is there to God that we have not seen? What other dimension is there to the kingdom? What other dimension is there to evangelism that we have not seen? Imagine that for instance, just an example, a man now steps into a dimension of intercession where you pray in a certain way and the spirit of God can literally make a multitude of people to have dreams of the cross in one night. That can be a dimension. And you find multitudes saved by the next day. Everybody saying, I had the same kind of dream. And thousands of people get born again by themselves in one day. Could it be that that is a dimension that is reserved for the end time? Models are important. But the challenge with models, number one, I repeat, is that because they are emotionally connected to their current results and their experiences, 
Chances are excellent that sometimes they can feel insecure and they can feel like failures if any improvement is added on their initial experience. Are we together? Yes. Let me tell you the truth. When I started ministry, I didn't see this kind of manifestations that you see now. I know there are times you are teaching and then when you start ministering, you see that maybe a special healing program and people are shouting, jumping up and down. But we did not see it in this manner. I had to study scripture myself to say, I hope that this thing is of God. How do you talk and every day people are shouting from start to finish? If it's a miracle service, people will understand. But even when you are joking, somebody is still shouting. So I needed to go to scripture and say, God, what is wrong? Am I all right? It was William Branham who would stand on a crusade ground and not minister for a long time. And he would say he's waiting for the angel that signifies his revelation. He would stand walking for a long time and later on he would just smile and say he has come and begin to prophesy. Now, I'm not saying you use that model, but I'm saying these are possibilities that have been shown in scripture, have been shown in the lives of men. It would be stupid for any man to go to a river in Abuja and sit down and say, fish, come quickly, bring my house rent. No. But it would be totally, it would be totally unbelief on your own part to shut that possibility from God. If it happened once, it, a portal has been opened again. It will not close. It will only be administered when it is needed. You see that now. Every possibility that is open in the spirit creates a portal in the earth where it can happen again and again. Sometimes they are reserved because the saints are not matured enough to walk in that dimension. God seeing that it can lead to another kind of error that will end up destroying the body of Christ. Now, most people who are new in the faith may not understand a strange experience that we used to have many years ago. It was the experience of oil and gold dust. There used to be these experiences. When we started ministry, many people would have these experiences. Oil coming out of their hands. I had videos where oil was dropping from a cross in a church. Not manipulation. You will see it from the video. Jars of oil. You will see feet of angels. Layers with gold dust. Silver dust. As we saw this thing, there was a breakout of it that time in Zaria. Many believers started coming into it. You know what? It now started leading to error. Because many people will go to pray and be looking around their body. They wanted gold dust and God withdrew that sign till today. So there are many things that God will not allow. Not because he cannot do it. He is more interested in the growth of believers. I have cried myself. Many of us who are, have been quite old in this ministry know. I have cried myself and what came out is oil, not tears. Sometimes we don't share these testimonies because we do not want to create a negative pattern. Someone will go now and say, wow, so oil is proof of anointing. 